And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. I've got Seth Letterman on the show today, and he is the franchise matchmaker. Uh, he is an author. He has been created great success for his clients, bringing the exact right match of the franchise that will uh, that they'll succeed the most easily in. So, Seth, I want to get into what are some of the barriers that people have in getting into uh are associated with franchises so uh, you know there are again a lot of misperceptions or false assumptions about franchising uh, and again the process that i take my candidates through and investors through in making that decision really gets them clear on what skill sets and strengths they currently can take mm -hmm. uh, and bring into business ownership uh, where are their industry preferences uh, What's very important is the due diligence process. There are several steps you would want to go through to determine whether or not this business is going to meet your professional, personal, and financial goals and objectives. And people don't know how to approach that uh, and wind up making decisions emotionally rather than logic and data and then make their decision with logic and data they could be emotional about their decision, but make the decision with logic and data. So I take them through this very streamlined step-by-step -step approach in determining what they would need to know at every step of the process that a franchise will take them through in determining whether or not they're a good fit for the franchise because it is, it's a mutual evaluation process. So you're taking all the, a lot of the barriers out of their way is what I'm seeing, just consistently going through. And that, that's one of the things that people say about you is that you're really good at eliminating those blocks. But I'm curious, would young people be uh, good candidates for franchises? I mean, I think about college, you know, these kids going to college, they get out of college, they spent a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to go to college, wouldn't it be better to find their what they love already and, and, and lead them in that direction? Or what's your thoughts on that? I think that there are probably a subset of that age range and population that that could work for. I think work ethic, life experience, wisdom comes from experience and probably would need to have experienced life uh, because most people are driven more by pain right. than pleasure. Um, and I would rather see people come from inspiration than desperation. Oh, absolutely. And I think there is possibilities for millennials in franchising, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of the aging baby boomers, children, they want to put into business because they recognize the cost for college is astronomical. They could put them in business for that. And for the right person, that could be the greatest gift they could ever do for their child is to put them That's in what I was curious because I, I, I know that the, the, the boomers are retiring, the millennials are moving in, and, uh, and so it, it's, it's just interesting as far as a, a possibility. Um, the, the next thing I'm curious about is the, so you, what I'm, what I'm thinking is, is that aspect of cost for investment. I, I know a lot of people think it, it takes millions. You mentioned a number earlier, it could be as little as just a few hundred thousand, 300,000 or more. And yet people don't have to have that all in the bank ready right now, right? That is correct. Uh, investment in franchising can range uh, as little as $50,000 to well over a million. Wow. So, and there's no direct correlation between the investment and expected returns. If a franchise has real estate involved, uh, there's going to be more upfront cost that doesn't necessarily dictate to bottom line results. There are a lot of options that don't require real estate that could generate more income for them. Uh, there's no guarantees in franchising like anywhere else in life. What you do have with franchises is the greatest likelihood for success, but that is predicated on that it's a good fit for them. I think people that failed in franchising in a system that works just wasn't a good fit. Right. Well, one of the things I was curious about is what makes franchising so much better than creating your own thing? You have a 
business that's already been proven. Uh, you have a brand, you have a trademark, you have a support system and training. There is not any franchise that I would ever stand in front of and represent where I wouldn't tell you that the investment to purchase that franchise would be tenfold if you had to recreate that from the beginning. Even if you came from that industry, which would make sense to think I could do this on my own, I always tell people, you probably can make a better hamburger than McDonald's, but do you want to compete with them? So <laughs> that's a natural reflex to want to, I could do this on my own, is it worth it? The amount of time, effort, and energy that you will save by buying a model that already exists and being able to look under the hood with the franchise disclosure document, the industry's regulated by the Federal Trade Commission, you have audited information, you're gonna to speak to owners. There's no better way of getting a full transparent look at what you're getting into than franchises. So quick question though, we, we got a little, just a little bit before we go to break. The Can you run one of these things part-time? So they come in three buckets. Uh, owner operator businesses, you're buying yourself a job. It's your roto rooter plumber going out in his van doesn't have the aspirations or desire to have an enterprise and employees. The other end of the spectrum are executive models. People used to call them passive or absentee. I don't like those terms. Only two things run on their own, a business and a car, and that's usually downhill. So executive models where you're managing a manager would be considered part-time, uh, 15 hours a week, can't all be done in the evenings and on weekends to manage a manager running that business. and then the remainder would be semi-passive where you are the manager and you're doing it full time, but you have employees. Very good, okay. So uh, one more section with Seth Letterman. He is the franchise matchmaker. This is Pat Dewar and we're on the Business Spotlight.